Now two views on the agreement signed last night from Ali Jalali, Afghanistan's interior minister from 2003 to 2005. He's now at National Defense University here in Washington. And Stephen Clemens, editor-at-large at The Atlantic and senior fellow and founder of the American Strategy Program at the New America Foundation. Well, gentlemen, there's been a lot of talk about what the United States promised in the document signed with the Afghans. Stephen Clemens, what are the big to-do items that the Afghans are now obliged to do? Well, I think the Afghans uh, are obliged to do things that I uh, regretfully say I, I think they, they can't. I mean, that what we hope that they will do is continue to build an inclusive civil society, a democracy that respects human rights, women's rights, that stamps out corruption and begins to deliver a better way of life for the nation as a whole. Um, that, that's the goal and objective, and, and I think that there are uh, uh, efforts underway to do that. What we're likely to see is something that is uh, a much more minimalist version of that, where opportunity is centered around Kabul, where, where a shrunken U.S. military force essentially acts as a deterrent to an overthrow of that government, but you basically lose control of much of the, the rest of the government. And as American forces draw down, the infusion of cash into that economy also dwindles. So that means security forces come down, and the whole dynamic in Afghanistan uh, becomes much messier. And so we're likely to see a messy future while having the expectation of you know, a, a, a more robust and balanced civil society. There are specific promises in the document, Ali Jalali, about protecting the rights of women, mm -hmm. about suppressing corruption while building government institutions. Mm -hmm. Do you share Stephen Clemens's pessimism that your government can do this? Well, there's one thing that, uh, of course, I agree with him, that uh, protection of human rights and also uh, um, a government that's accountable and uh, transparent and also inclusive. That is the key to stability in Afghanistan. No matter, no amount of uh, foreign troops or foreign money is going to stabilize the country unless there is a government that the people can trust. This is, uh, however, in the past 10 years, I think this Afghan society has changed. I think there's a lot of support for uh, the uh, respect of human, uh, human rights and also women's rights. I don't think the country will go back to the, the days that the Taliban were uh, uh, actually violating all kinds of rights of, uh, of men and women. So therefore, I am uh, optimistic that as far as the, the people are concerned, I think the Afghans have made choices. They are not going to, back, uh, to go back to that, that, that era. However, it all depends on the uh, security situation and also on the uh, capacity of the government that can protect the population, provide security, and the rule of law. And that can be uh, uh, possible only if the government can control its territory. I mean, I just say one, one key thing. I visited the Ministry of Women's Affairs in Kabul. This is a time with uh, a large-scale U.S. stewardship uh, of the Afghan situation, $120 billion a year going in. And that ministry had almost no resources to do anything in what you would consider to be the best of circumstances. So when you draw down the forces and you draw down the money, it's very hard for me to see, particularly as the power dynamics in the rest of the country shift to a, an ascendancy again of warlords in certain areas as partners with the U.S. government or perhaps partners of other, other players. That, that in that situation, I think we need to have a realistic lens. And I, I have been been actually uh, proposing that we need to find ways in anticipation of this to bring Afghans best and most talented women into the areas that we will be able to protect to give them opportunities that they won't be able to have in, in, in other parts of the country outside of Kabul. Partner was a word that the president used at, at last night as well. He said, with this agreement, the Afghan people and the world should know that Afghanistan has a friend and partner in the U.S. Would President Karzai say the same thing? to his people about the United States? I think he always says that that is a partnership. Partnership means that both sides in, in, in the partnership should, uh, you know, do their, their, their uh, you know, commitments or uh, uh, actually honor their commitments. So this, this uh, partnership agreement, with all the vagueness that it has, it sends a very strong uh, message to Taliban and to uh, their supporters in the region that uh, transition does not mean abandonment of Afghanistan. One yeah. specific point in the document says that the United States won't launch attacks on third-party countries from Afghan soil on other places. Would this make now illegal the United States' pursuit of terrorists, for instance, over the border in Pakistan? 
Well, it can be interpreted in different ways. Uh, one way is that, uh, yes, uh, Afghanistan and also its neighbors actually want the presence of international forces uh, to uh, not to uh, threaten uh, other uh, the neighbors or Afghanistan's uh, territory should not be used against uh, the uh, neighboring countries. However, uh, the uh, using of, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the uh, attacks by, by drones against Taliban or against the Al-Qaeda affiliated ones is not a country probably it can be interpreted as, as, as Al-Qaeda is not a country. Do you think that that's the kind of thing, Stephen Clemens, that may trip this agreement up in the future? Well, I think there are many things. There's not a status of forces agreement. Of course, it was a status of forces agreement that tripped up uh, U.S. forces remaining in Iraq and the inability to get anyone there. I think, you know, Ali Jalali is a declared candidate for president in the next election. And I think it's going to be interesting to watch these various candidates run and whether they will support or not a status of forces agreement in the, with the United States, because it could become a measure of how Afghans look at their legitimacy and what will eventually be some sorting out over whether the U.S. role in Afghanistan was helpful or hurtful. But it could become a test of legitimacy in the eyes of Afghan citizens, just as it was in Iraq. If that doesn't happen, U.S. forces will not stay in Afghanistan after 2014. Are the common Afghans in the streets, in the marketplaces, in the fields, as tired of war as President Obama says Americans are? Don't they want to see this end? Afghans are tired of war, there's no doubt about it. Uh, at the same time, uh, Afghans do not want to go to the past uh, and uh, have peace at any cost. So therefore, uh, they, um, the majority of people of Afghanistan look forward to this uh, partnership with the United States that can ex at least guarantee the uh, continued international support, U.S. support, to Afghanistan in terms of security, economic development, and uh, also regional cooperation, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, however, as um, uh, we, we discussed uh, earlier, that uh, all these other issues, uh, the interpretation of partnership, is going to be defined in the uh, states of uh, forces agreement. And that is the difficult part, because in Afghanistan, with the, what happened just recently, with the killing of civilians in, uh, in uh, Kandahar and uh, other issues, people are questioning whether the uh, foreign troops should be subject to uh, their own laws or Afghanistan law. This is going to be a sticking point in the uh, uh, strategic, I mean, the uh, SOFA agreement. And that actually was a, a deal breaking in, in, in Iraq, as you said. Ali Jalali, Stephen Clemens, thank you both. Ray, thank you.